Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. I've been working on this for a while now, but a few episodes ago, we bought the contents of a house, but this time it was all packed up. Anyway, you know the story, we've been going through it all, and I am making discoveries along the way. So I'm gonna head downstairs, we're gonna start digging through that trailer, keep emptying it out, and see what we find on today's episode. It's mystery, unboxing, it's antiques, it's collectibles. What more could you ask for? Let's go. I took the last load to auction. Now I'm starting to fill the truck back up again. I'm finding more boxes full of royal stuff. This, um, you know, the marriage of Lady Diana and Prince Charles. Gosh, she was so young there. Um, coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Just all kinds of stuff. Lots of Charles and Diana memorabilia. Filled with perfume flowers. But... Uh, you know, that's a particular crowd that likes that kind of stuff. But those that do really like it. Um, some of it was quite a bit older, though. Going back to the 19... Well, that's coronate, that's Queen Elizabeth II. But some of this is from 1936, 37. Flags. Uh, even a little door knocker. From 1936. That's actually kind of neat. So I'll put the uh, older stuff a little bit separate. We'll go through that and see if we can add to it. Um, I've got just a ton of boxes left to go. See a little box of toy cars here. And Oh yeah, I saw this in the, in the garage. It doesn't look like anything particularly old, but you know, the right car with the right wheels, with the right sort of thing, can be worth a a lot of money so it is actually worth going through this stuff lockups kid go oh cool i kind of remember these you could you had a little key to use to unlock the wheels doors rubber tires are missing off but they also had a, a little key that you could use and shoot them off with a spring so probably just i don't see anything super great in here but i'll we'll probably just put this out by the whole bin as well it's gonna be lots of bulk box lots at this sale. You can tell already. Another box coming out of the back and we've got an old Aladdin thermos. Now it doesn't have like, you know, Roy Rogers or Gene Autry or anything like that on it, but it does have a Bakelite top and that's a little bit more interesting. There's another oldie here. Genuine thermos brand. But what you want to look for when it comes to thermoses um, is if they have sort of like a TV show or something. So we've got the Bionic Woman with the lid. We've got uh, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Anything that's got a little bit of either advertising, like if it said Coca-Cola or Pepsi or whatever, or if it had like the TV show on it, um, those are a lot better. We've got some little embossed boxes, little jewelry box in there, which is empty. Um, it's a little leather case. Oh, it's a pedicure set. Go claim that. And that looks like it's French ivory. French ivory, if you ever see that on something, it's not actually ivory. It's, it's, it's a form of plastic. Um, some people would bring it in and say, I know I can't sell this to you because it's ivory. And I'd say, no, it's not ivory. French ivory is just a fancy way you put France or French in front of something and suddenly it made plastic sound more valuable. So, nice little box of collectibles there. I'll keep these three out separate because I think those are slightly better. Might be able to be sold. Maybe I'll be able to put a lot of more interesting thermoses together. We'll see what else comes out of it. Oh, and I found myself a box of matches. And that's not collectible, but you can always use wooden matches. Well, here is a box that was heavy. I'm going to decide to open it up and have a look, and it is absolutely packed full of antique kitchen items. You know, from uh, graters and slicers and beaters and mashers and smashers and cheese shredders and everything. Just 
It's like a 1920s kitchen all in one go. And I think that's probably, I'll put that aside, that's for an iron. But I will probably just put this out just as it is, as a massive heavy box of kitchen stuff. And I don't know what this is. I've never seen one of these before. It's some sort of three-legged device for putting something on. I don't know what. Hmm. Let's see. I am going to get through. Uh, I guess I better. <laughs> so many videos people ask, Alex, why don't you use a tripod? And I'll tell you why. It's because I can't do this or that or this if it's on a tripod. I got to move the camera around. Um, so for everybody watching at home that wonders, yes, of course I know what a tripod is. Um, it just doesn't come in handy with what I'm doing. What I need is another set of hands in here sometimes to help out, but that's not always available or the case. Speaking of cases, that's an orange crush, uh, old orange crush crate. It's so faded though, you can barely even make out the orange crush on it, but that's glass bottle, gosh, probably 1940s era, something like that. It's like a box of glassware. Come across a number of these boxes where it's just like, you know, ornaments or little, uh, these are powder containers, souvenir powder containers. I hear a music box in there. The haunting sounds of a music box. Last wound, who knows how long ago. Oh yeah, I see salt and pepper shakers and stuff. So anyway, we'll get that out. If, I'm still looking to see if I can find the um, replacement chimneys for those. I found a couple of Aladdin lamps and I haven't ordered any yet because I'm hoping that maybe the glass chimneys will be in here if I'm lucky. I do see a box over there marked tobacco cans. That might be promising. I'm going to get these two out of the way and uh, we'll search the boxes underneath. Here we have kind of a cute little uh, dovetailed... That's nice woodwork there. A little box set, but it's nesting boxes for flour, sugar, salt, all that stuff. It's a little kitchen set. Um, that's kind of neat. There's an antique blue ribbon baking powder tin, a uh, little wooden cake. This might be an ice bucket. They had a price at 47 bucks. I don't know. Maybe I could sell that separately. A little wooden barrel with it. Yeah, somebody would buy that. That's cool. I'm trying to pull out anything that can be sold individually. There's an antique sifter in there. I told my uh, wife the other day that if I get cremated when I go, she can just put me in one of these and sift me over a scenic location. But she said, your ashes are going to get all over the place. I said, ah, just use an old sifter. There you go. That's morbid. <laughs> the 1920s uh, jello mold shaped like a melon. I guess you could make two of these and put it together and have a whole thing, but that's uh, that's kind of a cool thing. It's nice to find some of these boxes where I have some stuff I can sell individually. Potato peeler. Huh. Well, that's kind of interesting. You screw it and mount it onto your, uh, onto your uh, cupboard, or not your cupboard, your countertop. Stick a potato on there, crank it, and this little blade is on a spring and it goes down and just peels the whole thing. Neat. There's a potato masher or a ricer. Uh, cool stuff out of that box. Thought this was a funny looking wine bottle, but it's not a wine bottle at all. Actually, if you flip it over, it says Simon's Havana Cigars, Montreal. 25 cigars, made in Germany. So what we have here, it's actually humidor. Look, that's where you'd put your sort of like your wet sponge or whatever, kind of in the top, in the lid. Your cigars go inside. And I imagine it would have had a very interesting paper label on it on the outside, maybe like a cigar label or something, which is no longer there. But that's kind of a neat antique uh, humidor that replicates a wine bottle. Also found a cool crate we picked it up i didn't even know it had the label still on it when we look at it it's got this really great i think that's a catalina and uh top flight oranges from california it's funny the whole having orange juice with breakfast thing was just a marketing campaign as they were having trouble selling oranges in florida and now people have orange juice with their breakfast all the time all because of some really great marketing <laughs> 
There's a box of assorted stuff. Cast iron pot, tractor seat. Probably just leave that in the box as it is. Open up another box. I've got some antique bottles. And look, the orange crush bottles to go in the orange crush crate. I've started putting some other bottles in there too, but this is likely what would have been in that crush container looking at the font and the way it's printed. So I'm going to put them back in their home. Go back to your home, bottles. There's actually some decent, that little character on the back is called Crushy. People. Soda bottles are definitely more collectible overall than, you know, early wine or some beer bottles. So it's good to look through a box like this where you don't really know what's in there because, you know, these are 10 to $15 a piece, you know, find 10 of them. There's a hundred bucks back right there. Fill a whole crate and that's a whole different story. So I'm going to keep filling that up and uh, see how many more of these I can find. A little ketchup bottle. To me, that's less exciting. And of course there are people who collect every kind of bottle, but you know, the old torpedo bottles, that's an earlier bottle, that one. Look at the, that's probably pulled right out of the river with that rusted uh, cap on there. Well, we've got some brooches. This feels full. Some necklaces, mostly costume jewelry. Oh, that might be a couple gold lockets in there. Plated. And a whole bunch of jewelry in boxes. This is the first time I've come across jewelry in a little bit. A little, is that a West Clocks pocket watch still in its original box? That's nice. Where'd it go? That's a sweetheart pin from the military. A little pocket watch down in here. These aren't really valuable pocket watches, but it's nice when you get them in there original packaging like this that somebody obviously uh, kept it together. It looks like it's been worn because it's got the uh, brassing coming through. Well, a little box of jewelry. Nothing wrong with that. I'll actually set that aside over here. This is my stuff that I either want to sell separate or spend more time with. Oh, and incidentally, look at this. I don't know if it's, if it's hand, like, it looks like it's factory made, but it's like a little a lunch kit or picnic basket. It's wood. It's got a carry handle. At first, I thought it might have actually been a pigeon carrier, which they actually did have pigeon cases because it's kind of that military green, and there were military pigeons, as odd as that sounds. But there's no little breathy holes there, so I don't think that's what it is. I think it's just a little wooden case. But I like it. I think it's neat. Okay, what do we have here? Silver gloss starch. Perfume starch. It's still full. This looks like it's sort of uh, unused kind of toiletries. That one's not that old. That is lanolin all-purpose cream for dry skin, and it's still in there. These are uh, largely unused sort of household to toiletry items. Um, but I'm having a look specifically at the tins because uh, certain tins are a little bit more collectible. This was kind of cool. They they had a price of five bucks, but that's kind of neat. See, it says British troop oil. It could be first war sometime around then. No rub laundry tablets. Kind of neat that all this stuff has been sitting unused. Well, a lot of it in here has been sitting unused for a long time. There's a John Bull bicycle repair tin. What is that? Wholesale plumbing and heating supplies. Oh, I see. It's like a little pull-down advertisement, like a little blind. Novelty piece. Got an old key. I see a Watkins tin in there. The reason I'm kind of having a look to see what uh, what's in here is that, of course, certain things with advertising are more collectible. Velvet Hone, 1931. Probably for uh, razors, I would suspect. We'll open that up. Yeah, I think you'd use this for your straight razor. You'd slide it around and get there to get the burrs off. Or any kind of knife, really. Just quite an odd little variety of fun stuff. Fun at home, root beer shakes. 
What is this? Ice cream. Hires. Oh, it's a Hires root beer um, syrup. I guess you could buy the concentrated syrup. On well, that glass has seen better days. The syrup is completely condensed in there. A little wax tin. Auto wax. Okay. Interesting little box of weird assorted stuff. You know, it would take forever to try and sell all this stuff individually. Oh, look, skeleton keys. Those are always a good seller. People make jewelry out of them or they have trunks at home. There's a cookie, uh, Davis baking powder, little cookie uh, cutter. Oh, this is a fun assortment of stuff. Somebody will enjoy this. Somebody will think this is cool. Some old medical bottles and stuff. Just really a, a nice mix of assorted random stuff. Good if you're an antique dealer or something and you want to put a bunch of this stuff out and you don't mind sitting on it for a bit. Or if you collect this kind of stuff, that's a nice assortment all in one go. We'll seal that back up. Get that out the door. Some of these assorted boxes are turning up some neat things like this antique vanity mirror. Set that over there. We've got a little, uh, I think this is just like a little fork set. But I love finding the little stuff like this. Now if the rest of it's in there, that's kind of a cool piece. It's iridescent, um, not quite depression glass. I don't hope the rest of it's in here. Maybe it's not. We have all these, uh, I think these are Fire King cups and saucer sets. We've got all those. Uh, Fire King bowls, which are collectible, kind of like Pyrexes. We've got all that stuff. Hopefully I'll find the bottom of that. That would be like the lid. Still cool though. And a couple little antique uh, vanity sets here, or manicure sets, I should say. I think that's what these are. Let's see. Yeah. Manicure set. Which would sit on your vanity. There's another one down here. This one's in a metal box. So your oils, your perfumes, your powders, all in one place. Maybe your jewelry in there, your rings. Some nice English statues. Let's see. Kingston pottery made in England. I've got a couple of those. And this is sort of an odd one. It's boat. Branksome, China, England. I don't know if that would have been like, um, I don't know what the purpose of it would be. It doesn't really look like an ashtray. It doesn't really look like a salesman sample, but they did do things like that. Anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. So finding some neat stuff, um, which is good. I think with this assortment of things, um, some of the stuff I'll be able to put out individually others will go by the box full and um this should be a good auction i think there's gonna be a, a lot of stuff in here people will find interesting and um more importantly i'm really hoping it'll get us our money back on the investment but it is a good quantity of stuff and it's really just playing the game of quantity hoping that there'd be a few little gems hidden in here so that is it for this episode um a lot accomplished so far the paint is going on the trim is starting to go on. The countertops, we'll, we'll have to get those measured and uh, cabinets should be going in very soon, I think later today. Uh, Han's got the stump grinded in preparation for the road, which will be going in next episode. So uh, lots and lots of work done this time around and even more to go. Um, as I was leaving, uh, or as Hans was leaving, he said, hey, I got these old lamps that I, I picked up. Uh, can you throw them through the auction for me? So I'm gonna do that. I guess we'll see what they go for. A couple 1940s kind of era, Royal Dalton-y looking. They're not actual Royal Dalton, but they're that sort of style uh, nightstand lamps. So Hans, I guess we'll see what they sell for and then we'll give you the money. Um, anyway, for me guys, I am back to work. I have a whole bunch of uh, stuff to empty out of a trailer and I don't have much time to do it. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna let the guys work on the, the little pool house back there and I'm gonna get to work emptying all this out. So have a wonderful day guys. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now. So far today, I have done uh, two trips to the auction house. I can actually walk in the trailer, but I still have all these boxes to go. See ya, Hans.
friend Hans is just leaving right now. He was here. You'll see him on another episode. <laughs> As for me, I've got to keep on digging and try and get this stuff out because um, I really only have about a, a week or so to get this all sorted. Um, we are going to head out of town. We're going to go on a vacation, which we haven't done in a while. And uh, I got to get this all wrapped up so they can plan the auction. So for me, I'm back to work. Luckily, most of this is going fairly quick as I'm just putting stuff out by the box load, as I've said numerous times, but we've got an antique chamber pot, a couple of chamber pots, um, some sock stretchers, random net. I'm not sure what you, what you do with that. Maybe it's for, uh, for fishing. That slides back. It seems to me like you could catch something in it and then close it in. It's uh, more intense than a butterfly net. Anyway, there's two of those. We'll throw those in this box too. And we'll put that out. Still waiting for the, you know, one real good gem to come out of this, which I haven't had yet. A lot of good generic sort of stuff, but no, you know, no real knockout item yet. A few cool things, but I'm going to get this box hauled out. It couldn't wait. I had to go through the box marked vintage tobacco cans. And yes, that's exactly what's in it. A lot of these sort of generic. There is a couple pocket tins, which are a little bit better. Uh, used to be a joke. You'd phone a store and say, excuse me, do you have Prince Albert in a can? And they'd go, yes. And they'd say, well, let him out and hang up. And the children would laugh their heads off. Um, I am looking for, you know, like that's a little bit better. I'm also shaking the cans too, because hear that they've actually stored tins inside of tins let me get this open there we go what do we have in here another little pocket tin kind of stuck in there a little bit there we go velvet boy i have ended up with a ton of those turret and the, the La Polina is kind of a neat, let me show you the graphic on this. It's kind of a nice graphic if you collect tins like that. So there are a few, you know, reasonably good sellable tobacco tins in here. Which I'm kind of surprised. I thought they'd be all, you know, the generic ones. But there are a few okay ones. Capstan Navy Cut Tobacco, that's an oldie. some cigar boxes but are they full of anything yes they are well, that's neat. mcdonald's export queen elizabeth the second coronation tobacco tin have not actually had that one before more flat pack tins uh, this is a little cigarette case embossed chesterfield flat tin Okay, well, we're getting some actual, like, this is legit stuff you'd see at an antique mall. And uh, you know, considering I had no idea that any of this was in there, it's kind of nice. I'm going to keep all my pocket tins together. And there's more. They had the market cornered on these velvet tobacco tins. Every, it seems like a lot of these boxes are full. Look at that. Panther Cigarettes, Holland. That's a neat looking tin. Yeah, so some good stuff. Some interesting stuff in here. Oh, look, more. Good grief. I mean, it's good that I'm finding good stuff. Every tin seems to be full of other tins. Yeah, look. Every tin has a little something extra in it. Cool. I was kind of going through this box of old magazines, which I was a little lukewarm on. They're, they're cool and all, but, uh, you know, knitting books for kids' clothes and stuff, which is interesting, but uh, I wasn't even going to show it on camera. I was just going to shove it in the truck. And the bottom of the box, I looked down in the side there, there are a ton of these little bottles. Now, you can see it's broken on the top. These are likely dug from a dump site, but... They have an interesting backstory. These are all um, like Wild West era opium bottles. So um, kind of an uncommon thing. You find them in real old dump sites around here. And uh, that looks like it's the top off of one of those. 
to figure out which top that's from. But yeah, that's there was a little lot of antique opium bottles. Kind of a part of our past. It's not really uh, thought of too much anymore. These look like pipe tips maybe or... Anyway, there was a few little odd things mixed in there, and uh, I'm just kind of looking to see. That looks like a maybe a bottle stopper. Never know what's going to be in the bottom of a box, but I uh, was not expecting a handful of uh, 1800s opium bottles. That's for sure. This kind of has the hallmarks of a fun box. Empire Wall Plasters Hydrated Lime. Interesting. Got a big M&M &M shooting a hoop. Looks like he was battery operated at one point. No, they had a price tag of $75 on this. Question is, why? What is it? Oh, it's a little portable uh, cocktail set. I mean, we've all seen picnic sets, but hey, this is uh, next level right there. You got your little shot glasses, you got the shaker. Okay, that is pretty neat. This is an Art Deco grooming set. This is for brushing off your clothes. But very Art Deco in design. That's neat. Telephone. Oh, found them. Melissa said I'd lost them forever, but no. Here are my marbles. And these are the, like those tea card albums. Space one's always kind of cool. You get the cards in with your tea, and then you get the booklet, and you try and fill it all up. Antique skates. The type you just clamp right onto your shoe. An old telephone. Decorative horse brass. And it looks like a big bin. Hang on, I'm going to put the horse brass separate. What is this oh it's a it's a duck brush it's a brush for your clothing but it looks like a a duck well that's different right people like different things like a 1950s duck brush why not oh, there's more marbles some old ones in there too more horse brass Actually, it's the uh, the horse brass that has the so silver wedding that with the dates on it. There's Queen Victoria, 1837, 1887 Jubilee. A ice cream cone piggy bank. Why not? Another horse brass there. 1937 coronation of King George. Brass bookends. And of course a big collection of red rose tea cards. It looks like this was in their inventory. They were selling for a buck a piece. I will put it out for the whole box and see what it goes for. But some kind of interesting and uh, unique stuff came out of this box. So kind of pleased with all that. So I'm ending today's episode with this. Jason and I are hauling a whole bunch of stuff into the auction house for what is our third load of the day. I'm going to keep at this tomorrow with the discovery, but we're slowly making a dent in that trailer. So thanks very much for watching today's episode, guys. Um, if you want to attend the auction and buy some of the stuff you've been seeing, you can go to kauctions.ca. This will be coming up uh, mid to late July of 2023. If you're watching after the fact, well, that's okay too. <laughs> but guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you all soon. And as always, have a lovely day and bye for now. Bye guys.